So I'm Duncan Smith. I work at Sloan Kettering uh, with Yestin Whitehouse, who was brand new when I joined his lab. Uh, and I work on, I essentially look at how DNA gets copied. So obviously every time a cell divides, it has to copy its entire genome. And it, you, know, you want to do that with no errors, ideally. And, uh, and so I look at sort of how that process is, is mediated. It's not such a novel question. I mean, it's been known for, for many, many years that mutations cause cancer. Um, you know, I think what, what I'm trying to do is apply maybe the last 30 years of technology to something that was a, that was a neglected problem for 30 years. So there are two strands of the, of the genome and one of them can be copied continuously and the other one actually has to be copied is these short uh, little bits of DNA that subsequently get stitched together. And these were very, very well studied in the 70s and 80s and then it kind of reached a plateau of what people could do. Uh, and as I say, it became a, a somewhat neglected problem. And so being able to apply the technological advances that have occurred in the last 30 years to, to an old problem is, is really, really fascinating. And there's obviously, a, it's tremendously important. It's, it's half the DNA in every cell of your body, and yet it, it hasn't been extensively studied. For. I think where, where my work really fits into cancer research is that you know, cancer, as people have sort of, as, as our understanding of cancer develops more and more, it's clear that it's thousands of different diseases and sort of talking about cancer research and, and looking for a cure for cancer is really not necessarily the most productive thing. And really cancer is just fundamentally a disease of when something goes wrong. And my work is very, very much on the basic end and I'm trying to look at the, the real fundamental mechanisms of a process because you can't understand what happens when something goes wrong unless you know what happens when it's going right. Why am I passionate about science? Because um, I mean, it's interesting and it's fun. Uh, you know, on a, on a kind of, on a day-to-day -day level, it can be a grind, right? I mean, like any job. And so you need, the, the thing that gets you through is, is that feeling of not only knowing something that no one else knows, but knowing something that someone else knows and then designing a follow-up experiment and knowing the result of that. And so that kind of, that, that pursuit of knowledge is very, very intoxicating. It's sort of a huge honor to get the, get the Damon Runyon. It's, it's, I think it's the oldest postdoctoral fellowship. It's certainly one of the most, most prestigious. Uh, I mean, as a foreigner, it's great because there are a lot of federal fellowships that, that only citizens or, or permanent residents can apply for. And so it's, it's a sort of great way to keep ambitious foreigners in the country. Uh, and yeah, it just provides you, provides you with, with this sort of external validation. I'd made a, a sort of perhaps slightly controversial decision to join a brand new lab, which you're often advised against if you want to get fellowships. And so to, to have that kind of external seal of approval, to have guaranteed money for three years uh, was, was great. And you know, the, you come to a retreat and you, you meet a bunch of people, you sort of get a chance to network. Um, there's this whole sort of support network that you're that, that you're currently you know, you're you're just placed in, and yeah, I mean it's it's really wonderful for your career.